All right, we're going to stand upon your feet, please, if you can. If you got two feet, they work, stand on them. If you're at home and you didn't bring your butt to church this morning, stand on your feet. Get off your couch, get off your toilet, stand on your feet. Amen. Let's read together. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah, you going to flip it, son? Elijah was a human as we are. Thank you. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Look to the person next to you and ask them, uh, or look them and say, plug in. Plug in. Okay, turn it back to me. There you go. All right. Good job, son. This month, we've been talking about prayer and the importance of prayer. Outside of the blood of the Lord and the sacrifice that he made for us, there's probably no function, nothing that a Christian can do more important than prayer. We said three weeks ago that prayer is your ability to communicate directly with the triune, omnipotent God. Could you imagine that the God of all creation will give us an audience before him? How many of you all have the ability to engage with President Biden? Lift your hands if you know President Biden or you know his secretary or you know Kamala Harris, who I forgot was even a vice president. Nate, if you know any of them and you have access to them, raise your hands. Nobody in here. How many of you all know Mayor Jane Castor? Raise your hand if you know her personally and you have access to her. You can go set up a meeting with her and sit down in her office and connect with her. You do? Anybody else? Nobody else? Amen. How about Ron DeSantis? I know some of y'all might want to do something to him if you saw him, but how many of you have access to Ron DeSantis? Raise your hand. None of us do. These people are creating, enacting laws and legislation that impacts us. We have no access to them. Our voices are completely unheard. And yet, there is one who's greater than all of them that you have direct access to in prayer. The devil wants to prevent you from accessing the throne of God. The book of Hebrews says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God has given us the opportunity to not crawl before him, groveling like peasants and serpents, but to come to him as a partner and profess your needs to him. This is the power, or this is the access that God has given to you. And yet, so many of us, on such a consistent basis, refuse to access that power. Last week, we talked about prayer from the sense of, we, we, we were talking about this month, the power of prayer, the purpose of prayer. Last week, we talked about the purpose of prayer. Next week, we're going to talk about the practice of prayer. And this week, I want to talk about the power of prayer. Look at the person next to you and say, the power of prayer. I want to 
define something for you for a few moments. Let's look at this word power. Power is the ability, from a scientific perspective, power is the ability to do work. Everything that is done is either done or not done because of power. You can do nothing without power. Power is the ability to do something or act in a particular way. If you have the ability to do something that's, that's, that's defined as your power. But there are two different types of power. There is potential and kinetic. Potential is the ability to do something that is not used. You have the ability, but because you have not tapped in, that ability remains potential. You can do it, but you don't do it. And that reminds me of most of our lives. Most of us have been in positions of what is called learned helplessness. That means that you have developed this mentality that you are helpless even when you're not. They did an experiment. And they, they put a rat in a, in a cage, in a maze. And they put some, some food on the other side. And every time the mouse attempted to get to the food, they would strike him with electricity. They would do it to the point at which the mouse refused to go to the, to the food even when there was nothing to prevent him from getting there. He learned to be helpless because of his past. There are a lot of folk in here today, there are people who are watching me right now that have learned to be helpless because of your past. You tried to do something and it didn't work. You tried a relationship and it failed. You tried to achieve a goal and you failed to accomplish it. And because of it, instead of you trying again, you sit back as though you no longer have the ability. You have the potential, but it is potential because you refuse to apply it. I look at people on the street, and I know none of them when they were five, six, seven years old, I know none of their goals was to be sleeping on the street. But somewhere along the line, they learned helplessness. Now, even though they can make their, their, their situation different because of their past, they refuse to try. I say this because a lot of us are going through things. A lot of us have gone through things. And maybe for a season, we fought. But when things did not change, we learned to become helpless. I got good news for you today. That it doesn't make a difference how long you've been in something. It doesn't make a difference how difficult the situation is. It does not prevent God from changing things in your life. Do you want me to give you an example? There was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 days. 12 days became 12 weeks. 12 weeks became 12 months. 12 months became 12 years. No change. And yet she said to herself, 
if I can connect to the power source, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Now, most folk may have looked at this woman who had endured these difficulties for years and they had chalked it up and said that her situation will not change. There are some people in here right now and you've been through something for so long that even you think it cannot change. But when she decided that she was going to connect to her power source, the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment and she became whole immediately. It didn't happen over a course of time. When she connected to the power source, she became whole. Some of you might feel like you've been trying everything you know and it won't change. And look, she tried and went to every doctor she knew. She spent every dime she had and nothing changed. But one thing happened that when she stopped relying upon man and she connected to the one who can change anything, God in an instant changed her destiny. And he can do the very same thing to you. See, listen. Listen. While Jesus was walking past her, he was potential. It did not become kinetic until she connected to it. And prayer is your opportunity to connect directly to the power source. So I wanted to break this down for you and talk about the power of prayer. I got plenty of time. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 18. I want to show you something. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verse 18. If you have it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, look on the board. This is what it says. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, where? In the heavens and in the earth. Let's read that again. I want everybody to read that because I need you to see this. And Jesus came unto them and said, all power is given to me in the heavens and the earth. Let's read it again. Y'all talking too low for some people who have just been told that your master has all power. Let's read that again. And Jesus came unto them and said, All power has been given unto me in the heavens and in the earth. Listen to this. If Jesus has all power, then the devil has what? No power. Let me say that one more time. If I give you all the money I have, then I have no money left. And if Jesus has been given all power, then that means cancer, HIV, sickness, disease, poverty, all of these things have no power over you. That went over somebody's head. He has all power. There is no power outside of Jesus. All power belongs to him. So you don't need to go to anybody else because they have no power. Go to the one who has all power. Listen to what he says. Turn with me to John's gospel. Chapter number 15. I'll read this from the New King James Version. I thought the... The New Living Translation watered it down a little bit too much. Look at what it says. This is Jesus talking to his people. 
He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains connected to me bears what? Much fruit. For without me, if you're not connected to me, you can do nothing. In order for you to do something, you have to what? Be connected. The beginning of the verse, he says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it might bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. That's what the Lord is saying to his people. Those who have fruitless prayer lives are not connected to the master. Let me say that again. I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been praying and my prayers ain't been answered. Then that tells me that you are not connected. The little boy asked his parents for a racing car set. When I was a kid, we used to have these track racing car sets and and you you build the track and then you put the little cars on the track and you pull the trigger and these cars would race around the track how many of y'all remember that some of y'all too young y'all know that no more this little boy was in the store and he saw this amazing elaborate racing car set and he went to his mom and he said mom Please buy me this racing car set. This is all I want. This mom, because she loved her son, she bought him the racing car set. And then little boy spent the next two days connecting the tracks, making sure that the tracks were connected to one another. And then he took the little trees that came in a box and he put them in the middle and he had little houses with it and he put them on the side and he had this beautiful, beautiful, amazing racing car set. It was, it was sitting up and looking amazing and he put the two cars on the track and he pulled the button and nothing happened. So he broke it down Put it, together, put it together again. Put the cars on the track. Pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. Then he took the track, took it apart, put it together again. Put the cars on it because he said, surely there's something I'm not doing right. Maybe I'm not connecting this to that. And he pulled the trigger and nothing happened. So he called to his mama. He said, mom, you bought me this racing car set. It's so beautiful, and I put together three times, and I keep pulling the trigger, and keep pulling the trigger, and nothing has happened. And his mom looked over at the racing car set. She noticed the plug was sitting down by itself. She walked over to the plug, and she put it in the outlet, and she said, try it now, son. He put the cars on the track. He pulled the trigger. And the car started moving around the track. And he said to his mom, Mom, how did you do it? And she said, Son, you did everything you were supposed to do. You just forgot to connect to the source. See, most of us are crossing every T and we dotting every I, but we keep forgetting to connect to the source. We look good, we sound good, but we have no power. Why? Because we're not connected to the source. The Lord describes that as having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So Jesus says, look, connect to me. If you connect to me, you will bear much fruit. If you're not bearing fruit, then that's an indication that you're not connected to me. So, I thought about this whole connection from the standpoint of the house. Because this past week, 
we were trying to uh, look at movies on, on July the 4th. We were looking at movies outside, and there was an outlet that was not working. And I plugged into the outlet, but the power didn't come on. So it made me think from a sermon perspective that we are like these instruments. And most of us are plugged into powerless outlets. We connect ourselves to people who have no power. Oh, did you hear the latest person? Oh, I got to go read the book from Michelle Obama. You see a book? I got to go read it because I got to connect to that source. Powerless outlets. I got to connect. Everybody talking about Beyonce. Everybody talking about, did you hear the last song? I got to connect to it. I, I got to connect. Connecting the powerless outlets. You connected, all right. You plugged in, but because they have no power, they can't transform your life. Look at the person next to you and say, help me, Lord. So I got a couple points I want to leave with you. First thing I want to say to you is that when you connect to Jesus, the right source, listen to this, all of the power that is in the source becomes available to you. If that outlet has 110 volts of energy, it will never give you 20 volts. It will never give you 50 volts. It will give you 110 volts every time you connect to it. If Jesus says, all power has been given unto me and you connect to Jesus, then that means that all power has become available to you. And anything that you need God to do for you, if you can just connect to him and stay connected to him, any power that you need to make any change is available to you. The other thing I like about this is that how many folk in the house got those six strip outlets? How many of y'all got that? And you plug the six strip outlet into the power source, listen to this, and then you connect stuff into the six strip outlet. You would think that each of those things that you connect to it only get 20 volts of power because you're dividing six by dividing 110 by six. But something amazing happens. Listen to this. Everything that is connected to it gets the same power regardless of how many things you have connected to it. That tells me that I don't have to hate what anybody else has going on. All I got to do is find out what source they're connected to and connect to that source. So if God is blessing somebody over here, I ain't got to be mad and like, look at that house that God gave them. Look at that car that God gave them. They don't deserve it. I don't even, they ain't even been saved long enough. How they get that new husband? How they wife get this? How they get this new job? I ain't got to hate on nobody because God can bless them and bless me all at the same time. Every de device that connects to the power strip has the same access to the same power. But there is one thing that you can do that will mess you up. 
that's when you try to plug into a device that's plugged into the power source. If you ever had a computer that was plugged into the wall, listen to this, and you plugged your phone into the computer, you won't get the same power because you're not plugged directly into the source. You plugged into something that's plugged into the source. And a lot of us rely upon other folk. Girl, pray for me. I'm going through. Uh, I need somebody to talk to. I'm going through. Somebody need, oh, Lord, if only you would send me somebody. No, I don't need nobody because the somebody that died for everybody is available to all of us. And I can correct directly to him just like you can. You don't need to say, oh, if I could just get pastor to pray for me. No, you can pray for yourself and the same God that answers me will answer you just like he answers me. In fact, Jesus said, in that day, I won't even tell you to pray for me because God loves you for yourself. You have to have your own connection. Just like that old school commercial. They used to run all the time on BET about that album. He said, can, can I borrow your album? He said, no, 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 my brother. You got to get your own. And that's the way I feel about Jesus. When it comes to my relationship with Jesus, no, 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 my sister. No, 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 my brother. You got to get your own. You can't rely upon me. You can't rely upon my prayers. You can't rely upon my fasting. You can't rely upon my, my obedience. You can't rely upon my discipline. You got to get your own discipline. You got to get your own prayer life. You got to get your own fasting life. You got to get your own Bible study regimen. You got to get your own. I'm preaching good, whether you think so. So the Bible says that Jesus, in, Ma in Mark's gospel, chapter number 11, turn there with me real quickly, Mark's gospel, chapter 11. Mark's gospel, chapter 11. I'm about to show you something. Mark's gospel, chapter 11. We're going to look at verse number 20. When you got it, say, I got it. Says the next morning, as they passed by the fig tree he had cursed, the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, thank you, Lord, for just dropping that in my spirit. Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. Listen to this. Jesus said to his disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into, sea, into the sea, and it will not happen, but, and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, listen to this, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Jesus. Let me say that again because I think when I mixed a couple words that may have went over your head. So let me say it again. Verse number 22. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. I thought maybe two or three saints who are going through some storms right now would really love to hear this part. I tell tell you you can pray for anything and if you believe that you received it it will be yours God is saying that anything you pray for if you believe it it will be yours power in prayer prayer changes things Look at the person next to you and smack them on the shoulder and say, baby, prayer changes things. You tired of your situation? 
Pray about it. Luke chapter 18 says men should always pray and not give up. That's what it says. That means you keep praying and you keep praying and you keep praying. Well, I prayed long enough. Maybe it's not God's will. No, no, no. It's not God's will that you give up. Keep praying. Keep praying and keep praying and let God change it when he wants to change it. You just pray and keep praying and keep praying. Well, I don't see it happening. Keep praying. I don't see it changing. Keep praying. I don't hear, I don't hear a miracle. Keep praying because the fact that you're praying is the evidence that you need that God's going to work a miracle on your behalf. The Bible says your faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you won't say evidence, let me see your faith. Look at the person next to you and say, baby, let me see your faith. Baby, let me see your faith. Let me see your faith. That's your ability to keep praying even when things ain't changing. That's your ability to keep speaking even when the devil is yapping in your ear. Your faith is the evidence that you need that God is changing things on your behalf half I need two three I need two people to tap somebody and say God's working it out God's working it out it's working it out so Jesus he goes to this fig tree and he curses the fig tree and he keeps on walking when he cursed the fig tree Nothing changed. Oh, Lord Jesus. He, he sees this fig tree. He wants to get something for it. He's looking for some fruit, and the fig tree does not have fruit on it. Some of y'all say, well, it wasn't in the right season. But remember, the Lord said that you should be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that give it fruit in its season. And its season never ends because its leaf does not wither. When the Lord comes to you, he is expecting to receive some fruit. And if you're not able to produce, then that's your problem, not his problem because God has made you capable of producing all the time so he comes to this tree there's no fruit on it and he curses it why does he curse it because he don't want nobody else to be fooled by something that looks like it has fruit but don't have no fruit on it help me holy ghost and it's a whole lot of folk that you've been connected to and dealing with that look like they got a lot of fruit on them but they ain't got no power they can't make no changes they sound good they look good oh i feel like preaching to somebody here it sounds good and it looks good but it got no power and cannot make any changes so Jesus curses it so nobody else can be tricked by that nonsense and he keeps on walking the tree looked the same his disciples thinking he crazy well I, I guess the Jesus he done lost it now he cursing a tree but Jesus didn't need evidence that the tree was changing because the evidence that he needed was the fact that he prayed. So he walks away. And then on his way back, he comes. And the tree, listen to this, has been withered away. And Jesus says nothing about it. His disciples looked at the tree. And they're the ones that note that Jesus spoke to it. And it changed. And Jesus says to them, maybe you don't really understand prayer. Because if you understood prayer, this don't surprise me that this changed because I spoke to it and I know that when I speak to it, it's going to do whatever I tell it to do. So I ain't got to walk past it and be surprised that it changed because I knew it was going to change when I prayed. And the Lord is saying that we need to pray in faith knowing that he's going to change our situation, knowing that he's going to turn it around, knowing that he's going to fix it on your behalf. And if you do that, that's the only evidence that you ever need what's the evidence I pray I pray what's the evidence I pray and I kept praying and I prayed some more it didn't change okay I kept praying then let me get to the let me get to the story y'all got me preaching too hard today it's hot in here Bible says that in James chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, that Elijah was a human just like we are. But he prayed that it would not rain. And then he came back and prayed again. Now, see, you don't understand the part that Elijah actually prayed. The first time, he didn't pray, he didn't pray that we see the testimony. He just spoke it. Hmm. 
Jesus said to me as I was just reading this scripture to you when he says, if you say to the mountain, but you don't understand that that is a form of prayer. When you speak to something, if God is on the inside of you, it is God speaking to you. And so everything must obey it, not because you said it, but the greater one that is in you is speaking to the situation. So just like Jesus himself spoke to that thing on your behalf, when you speak to it, you are allowing God to speak to situations. Oh, Jesus. So Elijah comes and he tells the wicked king, Ahab, he says, listen, you need to prepare for, for a, a, a flood. It hadn't rained for over three years, but he's telling him to prepare for a flood. This comes right after he kills all of Baal's apostles. He says, prepare for a flood. And then he goes and he prays and he sends his servant to tell him what happened. And his servant came back to him and says, I see nothing. Elijah didn't say, man, I guess God ain't in this. He said, okay, no problem. Hold on one second. He goes right back and he gets on his face and he prays again. Then he gets up and he goes to his servant and he says, go tell me, Gehazi, what you see. And he comes back and he says, I see a little small cloud about the size of a fist. He says, no problem. Let me go and pray again. And he goes and he prays again. And he goes back to him and he says, okay, now what do you see? I see, I see a whole bunch of clouds now. He says, hold on, hold on, hold on. That ain't it. That means I still need to pray. Let me go back. He goes and he prays again. And then he comes back and he says, okay, he says oh, I see a bunch of clouds getting ready to rain all over us. And Elijah says, I know you were going to see it. That's why I kept on praying and this is the power that God makes available to all of us and he literally tells you that if you pray with the same level of intensity and fervency as Elijah did the same results will happen and manifest for you so why do you think the devil don't want you to pray because he wants you to continue to think that he's the God of this world when he's not. He's the lowercase g-o-d of the children of this world. But our God is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no God but our God. And when he tells something to move, it must move. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what the devil does. When Jehovah steps up and says move, listen to me, it must move. When the storm is raging, I wish I had two or three people that came to church to praise the Lord up in here. When the storm is raging all over your life and the Lord steps up and he says, peace, be still, it means it don't make a difference how long it's been raging, how hard it's been raging. When the Lord says peace, there will be peace. Ooh, I feel like. Power of prayer. What's the power of prayer? It's the ability of God to work on your behalf. That's the power of prayer. The same God that spoke everything into existence from no thing. Do you understand that? God didn't take something and create something out of it. He created something out of nothing. I ain't got enough money. You don't understand the power of prayer, baby. Because my God created the stars in the sky 
out of nothing. Oh, Jesus. Thought I had some happy folk up in here today. You don't understand the power of prayer that's working on your behalf. Well, I don't have enough joy. That's because you don't understand the power of God. He took something and he created everything out of nothing. So surely this little thing that you're asking him to do is nothing. It's like me stepping on an ant. Ant don't stand a chance. And the Lord can step on anything that rears its ugly head against his people. So, what am I saying to you? I'm telling you it's time for the saints of God to get up off their butt and to fall on their knees. You laying in the bed crying and depressed. Get on your knees and pray. Trust God and keep praying until he changes. Trust God. And don't you understand that God started changing it the moment you, you started praying? He started changing it. He started fixing it. He said, God, I need you to sit, fix this situation. He said, no problem. I got you, boo. He started doing it the moment you started praying. But you have to keep going and have faith. Remember the scripture that we read last week says that the man who prays and wavers, let not that man think he shall get anything from God. If you pray and one moment you high, woo, God going to do it. Woo, we going to do it. And then the devil puts it on you and you having a pity party. Let not that man or woman think they going to get anything from God. God needs somebody who's going to operate like Jesus. Speak to the situation, and even when it don't change, keep on going, because you know God is working. And then when you come back to it, you can tell somebody else. Ooh, can you, so you spoke to that. You prayed about that, and God changed it. Yeah, let me, let me introduce you to my Jesus. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. So, Plug in. Plug into him. Plug into him. All of his power is available to you. What is it that you need God to do for you? Plug in. Get connected and stay connected. Stand on your feet so we can get ready to go home. Next week, directly after um, Bible school, after service at 1115, from 11.15 to 11.45, we will have briefly our first new members training course. I decided to do it directly after service so that you won't have to come out two times. But <clears throat> please, please, please um, be here. 11.15, come to the front, sit down, and we'll make sure that you start your new members instruction. Baptism will be on Saturday the 15th. I had a location. The pastor had something going on that Saturday, so he had to cancel it. I got another location. I'm going to confirm it and give it to you by this coming up Wednesday. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before your throne. We thank you in Jesus' name for this time that you've given to us, Lord, to praise you, to honor you, and to adore you. God, we pray that you would take this word that we've received that you would help us so that we can receive we can receive this word and it can fall on good ground and produce a harvest after its own kind. We praise you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Lift your hands now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. You are dismissed.